What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh and it's official. President Biden wants to raise taxes. He wants to raise taxes on the wealthy, he wants to raise taxes on corporations, and he wants to remove some tax breaks from oil and gas companies. The goal, according to President Biden, is to reduce our federal deficit by $1 trillion over the next decade while not slowing down the economy. Now if you hear that and you think, Jaspreet, something sounds off. Well, you're not wrong. I attended one of my best friend's weddings over the weekend, and at the wedding, I lost my voice and I got a stuffy nose, so please bear with me as we get through this video because I have some very important things that I want to go over. There are two general theories on how you can raise your tax revenue. Theory number one is you raise the tax rate because now, depending on how much money people make, you will make more money in taxes because you're charging a higher percentage. But the downfall with that is there's a risk that the economy could slow down because you're charging people more money in taxes, and that could in turn reduce the amount of tax dollars you receive in total because now the economy isn't as big as it could have been. Now on the flip side, option number two is you charge a smaller tax rate. This way people and companies have less expenses, so they have more money to help grow the economy, and in turn, you'll have a bigger economic pool, but a lower tax rate. So the pro here is you pay less money in taxes, but the downfall or the con is, well, there's a chance that the economy does doesn't grow big enough to subsidize the slower tax rate. The United States is facing a lot of issues from inflation to this growing national debt and this national deficit. And in order to combat that, President Biden wants to raise taxes. And he wants to raise taxes particularly on rich and wealthy people and corporations. And I kind of broke this down into three different buckets. He wants to increase the top tax rate, the income tax rate that rich people pay. He wants to increase the corporate tax rate. And then he wants to increase and create a new minimum kind of like a wealth tax but not exactly a wealth tax but a they call it a billionaire tax but it doesn't just apply to billionaires a unrealized gains tax so this is probably the biggest and the most substantial change to our tax code that if this goes through would make a lot of changes to how we do our taxes and while it's originally designed only for the very wealthy you want to be aware of this because there's a chance that this could apply to you too but I'll get on to this when I get to number three so let me start here by talking about what President Biden wants to do to increase income taxes. This is what our tax rate looked like in 2022. We follow something called a marginal tax rate, which means that the tax rate you pay depends on which bracket that you're in. So for example, let's assume that you make $100,000 a year, and these are numbers based on you filing your taxes as a married couple jointly. So if you and your spouse make $100,000 a year, you would fall right here. So from the first zero to $19,900, you would pay 10% of that money in taxes. Then for every dollar you earn between $19,901 to $81,050, you'd pay 12% of the money in taxes. And then between $18,051 and $100,000, you'd pay 22% of that money in taxes. So because you made $100,000 a year in taxes, you're not going to pay 22% flat on your taxes, you're going to pay that marginal tax rate. You're going to pay 10% of your taxes on the first almost 20,000, then 12% in taxes on the next 60 or so thousand, and then you're going to pay 22% taxes on whatever's left. So that's how marginal tax rates work. What President Biden wants to do is he wants to change the top tax rate from 37% to 39.6%, and he wants that to start here at uh, $450,000. So let me just draw this out right here. If we make this $450,000, he wants to change the top tax rate to 39.6. So if you are a married couple and you make over $450,000 a year, what that means is that your top tax rate is going to be 39.6%. So we could see some other adjustment here to help organize the brackets a little bit better. But what that means is the top tax rate is going to go up from 37% to 39.6, and the top tax rate is going to start a whole lot lower than 628,000. Now this proposal hasn't gone through yet, but if it goes through Congress, this new higher tax rate would start applying to your 2023 income. Second, President Biden wants to increase taxes on corporations. So in 2022, corporations are paying a 21% corporate tax rate, or at least this is what the tax code says they're supposed to pay. Obviously, a lot of corporations take deductions and other loopholes that they can find legally, which allow them to pay less money in taxes, but this is what they're paying. And President Biden wants to raise this to 28 
0.1%. Now, if you really want to understand the implications of this, you need to understand how corporate taxes work. So the way corporate taxes work is like this. Let's assume that you have these two people, this person with a nice mustache, and this lady right here with a nice braid, or as we like to call it in my native language, Punjabi, a gut. These two people own this company. And this company is a corporation, and it's in the business of selling guacamole. So let's assume now that over the course of the year, this company makes a million dollars in revenue, and then it has to pay all of its costs to run the business. Let's assume for the sake of this example that it has half a million dollars in operating costs. You pay your employees, you pay your operational costs, you pay your materials costs, which leaves you with half a million dollars in the bank account. Now, this half a million dollars is the money that the owners get. It's their profit. Now, if this money stays in the bank account, this corporation is going to have to pay taxes on this profit. So the corporation is going to have to pay taxes. In this case, it's 21% in 2022. If this proposal gets approved, it will go up to 28%. So now this corporation pays taxes right here. And if it pays just 20%, so let's assume for the sake of this example that it's 20% just for round numbers, that means there's $400,000 left in the corporation which can now be distributed to the owners. So now you pay taxes, in this case $100,000, and this $400,000 gets distributed to these owners. Well, these owners now get this money in their hand, and what's gonna happen when you get this money in your hand? Because when it's here in the business's account, it's not in the hand of the owners, it's in the hands of the business. Even though you own the business, it's not technically your money, it's the business's money. So the business has to pay taxes, and then when the business pays you, well, you gotta pay taxes again. So now, when you get this $400,000 in your pocket, you're gonna have to pay taxes again on this profit distribution. That's why it's called a double tax, because now the corporation has to pay taxes, and when the corporation distributes this money to its owners, now the owners have to pay taxes again. This might be another 20% tax that you have to pay. So you have tax number one and then tax number two right here. The reason why people love the idea of taxing big corporations like Google and Amazon and Apple is because they have these massive multi-billion dollar profits that people feel that they don't pay their fair share on. They use all these fancy accounting strategies to pay less money in taxes. But what you have to also keep in mind is that when a corporation has smaller profits, they're gonna change the way that they do their business. I mean, if a company is seeing their profits shrink either because their expenses are going up or because people aren't buying their products or because taxes are going up, they're gonna change the way that they do their business and they're gonna change the money that they have to invest back into their company. Because in this case, if corporate taxes go up, you have less money in the bank account. And if you have less money in the bank account, you have less money to go out and hire more employees. You have less money to invest in growth. You have less money to go out and innovate with. So if a corporation has higher expenses, if they have smaller profits, well, that's gonna impact the way that they do their business. So you have to be careful here, and this is what President Biden is trying to do. He's trying to find the right number where how much can you raise taxes to now raise your tax revenue without having to impact the actual corporation. So this is the balance in the game that President Biden is playing here. Plus, he also wants to remove some of the tax breaks and tax credits for oil and gas companies. And the interesting thing about that is we're seeing this whole dilemma of the energy industry because of everything going on between Russia and Ukraine, where gas prices have been skyrocketing skyrocketing and President Biden and the government in general keep saying that oil companies need to go out and drill for more oil. We need more oil production. And now they're working to eliminate some of their tax breaks, which some people are saying is counterintuitive at a time where you need more oil and gas production. And the third and the biggest thing that President Biden wants to do is he wants to create a tax on unrealized gains for wealthy people. So the way it works is if you are worth over $100 million, he wants to impose a minimum 20% tax on all gains, realized or unrealized. So let me show you what that means. So to reduce the numbers and make it a little bit easier to understand, let's assume that you go out and you buy a stock on the stock market right now for $100 a share. A number of years go by and the stock goes up in price to $1,000 a share. Now, you don't actually make any money unless you sell that stock. But what this proposal says is if you are worth over $100 million, you would still pay taxes today on this $900 worth of unrealized profit. So I'm not going to call it profit. I'm going to call it profit. 
you would have $900 worth of taxable income even though you don't actually have any income because on paper, your wealth has gone up. So another way to think about it is you bought a home for $200,000 and now this home is worth say a million dollars, but you don't sell it. You're just living in this home. But on paper, you think it's worth a million dollars because Zillow says your home is worth a million dollars. And because you have this unrealized gain, you have a taxable event in this case. And in this case, President Biden says you'd have to pay a minimum 20% tax on all of these unrealized gains. The whole idea behind doing this is it wants to start taxing the ultra wealthy people who are living off of their unrealized profits. So the biggest example of this is Elon Musk. Elon Musk hasn't been paid a salary for working at Tesla. Instead, he's been getting stock options and he got tens of millions of stock options to buy the Tesla stock at $6 a share. And then when the stock went up to over $1,000 a share, this stock options that he had were worth billions, billions and billions of dollars. And instead of going out and selling his stock options, what he did was he borrowed against it. He took out debt against his stock options. Debt isn't taxable. When you go and get a mortgage, you're not paying taxes on the debt that you get. When you refinance your mortgage, you don't pay any taxes on that. So what he did was he borrowed against it. Essentially, he refinanced against the value of his Tesla shares and he lived off of that and didn't pay any money in taxes. So this new proposed tax would not allow somebody to do this. Now you'd have to pay taxes on this income, even though it's not actually income because you have no money in your pocket. This is all dependent on the current values of your asset. Now, pretty easily, you can start to see where the issues would arrive because what happens now if you have this $1,000 worth of profit here or unrealized profit that you have to pay taxes on and the next year you have a stock market crash and now next year it goes down to $500 a share. Now, what's going to happen? Are you going to get a tax refund? I don't know why I wrote a K here, but are you going to get a tax refund? Are you going to get your money back? Or what happens if the stock goes down to zero? then what happens? So there's a lot of questions on how you would do this because now you're taxing profits that are not even there. And you can start to imagine how difficult this will become and how expensive it will become when we start to look at things that are not on the stock market. Like how do you value a private company? Or what about real estate? What if real estate prices go up and you don't actually know the real price of a property? Does that mean that these people are going to have to pay for an appraisal every single year on their real estate? Or what about art? What if you bought a very expensive Rolex and the price of that goes up? Or you bought a nice Picasso or some other expensive painting? How are you going to value each one of these things so you can see how expensive and difficult it could become to help monitor and track all of these taxes? Well, the initial argument is, well, this is just a way to get your fair share from the wealthy and the ultra rich. But there's one thing that I want to remind you of. And the easiest way to understand the way the taxes work is just by looking at history. If we go back in time to 1913, when the income tax was first created, it was created as a way to soak the rich. It was a way to get your fair share from the ultra wealthy that way the ultra wealthy would pay taxes. So the income tax when it was created wasn't for the regular person. It was only for the super rich. And the way that it was designed is you would pay a 1% tax if you made more than $20,000, which in today's time is right around $550 thousand dollars and then if you were really really rich you would pay a six percent tax on all income above five hundred thousand dollars back in 1913 which in today's time is about ten million dollars so this is what the tax rate used to be and if you made under twenty thousand dollars a year which in today's time is under half a million dollars or so then you would pay no money in taxes if you made above half a million dollars you pay one percent and six percent over all income above ten million dollars in today's dollars now in today's time it's no surprise that this income tax isn't just for the rich everybody pays an income tax whether you're rich middle class or broke so what happened was the government kept coming up with bigger expenses and more reasons to raise taxes and so what happens is the government tends to not be very good with their money in fact once they start to get more money you don't see their expenses ever go down their expenses always keep going up because the government keeps coming up with new ways to spend money and create new government programs and so they always need more money they're not the best with money and so once they get their foot in the door with a new tax strategy, that new tax plan, the new tax strategy, which was originally designed just for the rich, it typically doesn't just stay for the rich. It becomes a tax for everybody because now that the government can tax, say, unrealized gains on wealthy people, that means they can tax unrealized gains on 
unwealthy people. I mean, if you just think about it practically, if everybody across the board, rich, poor, middle class, had to pay a 20% tax on their unrealized gains, there's no way that it would get approved because the majority of people would say that that's unfair. Why should we have to pay a tax on our unrealized gains? So it's much easier to get something like that approved when you're talking about rich people and the ultra wealthy having to pay this tax on unrealized gains. But once that gets through the door, if the government deficit continues to grow and they need more money, well then it's a lot easier for the government to say, well, we need to make a one-time higher tax on unrealized gains for not the rich and wealthy, but for regular people. And then that's how taxes get spread upon the average person by using the rich as kind of like a uh, foot in the door of saying, this is why we need to get this tax passed. And then who ends up bearing the burden of it? Well, the average people the poor and the middle class. We see this happen across the board with pretty much every tax. So now your question might be, so how does the government actually raise taxes in a way that's fair? That way the rich and wealthy can't just keep using these loopholes to not pay any money in taxes and make billions and billions of dollars while the middle class and the poor are the ones that are paying most of the income in taxes and have to bear the burden. Well, the alternative could be to tax something like consumption because when you tax consumption, then the people who are spending all of this money are the ones that are paying taxes. So if Elon Musk goes out and takes out a loan of billions and billions of dollars against his Tesla stock, and he goes out and he buys a bunch of Teslas, and he buys a whole bunch of nice things, well, then he has to pay taxes on the money that he spends. And so now you're paying taxes on the money that you spend. You're paying taxes on what you consume. And if you have billions of dollars and you're buying yachts, you're buying private jets, you're buying a whole bunch of things, well, you'd pay more taxes because, well, you have more money to spend. But in any case, this is what President Biden is proposing, and he also wants to do two more things as a way to tax the ultra-wealthy. First, he wants to eliminate tax breaks on the carried interest deduction, and second, he wants to eliminate like-kind exchanges, things like the 1031 exchange for real estate investors. So the carried interest tax deduction, the way that works is, let's assume that this is a money manager right here. I wanna label them MM, not minority mindset, a money manager. And this company goes out and they raise millions of dollars from a whole bunch of different investors. And now they go out and they invest this money. So now they invest this, let's just say million dollars and they can earn a return of, let's just say another million dollars. So now they're gonna make a million dollars of profit and this money is gonna be distributed to the investors. So in this case, it might be 80% or $800,000 that gets distributed. So sorry, there's a O0 missing. So $800,000 gets distributed to the investors, which leaves $200,000 worth of profit here for the money manager. Now, currently, this $200,000 worth of profit that the money manager makes from this investment is taxed as investment income. It's given the lower tax rate, that 20% capital gains tax. But what President Biden says is that this $200,000 worth of income that money managers are making from the profits of managing other people's money should be taxed at ordinary income rates, not at investment rates, which means that now your top tax rate wouldn't be 20%, it'd be closer to 40%, the 39.6% number that I talked about earlier in this video. And the last deduction that President Biden wants to get rid of is the like kind exchange deduction, which essentially says if you go out and you buy this property for $100,000 and it goes up in value to, let's just say, again, for round numbers, a million dollars, and then you sell, you have $900,000 worth of taxable income. But if you take all of this million dollars and you go out and you buy a bigger property, you will pay zero dollars in taxable income today thanks to something called the 1031 like kind exchange. So you sell this property, you have a whole bunch of cash in your pocket, you take the profits, you go out and buy another property, it's called a like kind exchange. And right now, you can defer 100% of your profits and you can do this until you die, but President Biden wants to get rid of this. Now again, all of this is just a proposal. It hasn't been approved or passed by Congress yet, but if you wanna stay up to date on what's happening in the top finance and business world, and you wanna stay up to date on what's happening with these tax proposals, then you should subscribe to Market Briefs. It is a free financial newsletter that I create Created. Every morning, our team breaks down what's going on in the top finance and business world, and we email it to you in a fun, easy to read, and witty newsletter. We have tens of thousands of people that love and look forward to reading our newsletter every single morning. So if you wanna sign up for Market Briefs, all you gotta do is click that link down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video on the changing world order that I think you'll love, and while you're at it, you can subscribe to Market Briefs for free by clicking that button below. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep hustling.
right now the world order is led by the United States and the United States dollar. Before the United States, it was the British Empire and the pound. And before the British Empire, it was 